Hey guys, this is Mr. Roxy coming at you live from, excuse me. Oh. Hi guys, this is Mr. Roxy coming at you alive from Palm Beach in Florida. Uh, as most of you know by now, I had to take a break for a couple of uh, weeks for uh, due to an unfortunate medical incident. Uh, but here I am, alive and smiling, uh, approximately 15 to 25, uh, sorry, 15 to 20 pounds lighter than what I was the last time uh, you guys saw me. Uh, for the uh, people who use the um, modern system as opposed to the um, abacus method, uh, 15 you know, pounds or so is about uh, six or seven kilograms. And for a guy like me who jogs five miles every day, well, used to up until March 23rd, um, I don't have five pounds, seven pounds, 10 pounds, never mind 20 pounds to give away on any given day. So that is just a completely ridiculous setup for me. Anyway, what started off as a, a relatively um, inconvenient bout of food poisoning turned into a uh, significantly more uh, uh, you know, troublesome medical ordeal. I spent many days in hospital. Uh, during the past two weeks, I've had to go to ER a couple of times. And of course, as I said, they, uh, they kept me in hospital too, uh, just to make me look real pretty. So, hey, you know what? I got so much catching up to do. I don't even know where to begin. In fact, I don't even know where we were the last time we were still chatting with one another. Uh, a couple of things that are interesting here is, um, let me just go to my, uh, let me just go to my internet just for a second here. I just wanna go to the channel. You guys were just amazing. You know, I, I posted uh, the fact that I'm gonna be that I'm gonna be out of commission for a while, and uh, the messages from you guys. I mean, it's such a community of good people. Every single message, welcome back. You know, take care of yourself. Glad to hear you're all right. Wishing you a speedy recovery. I mean, this goes on and on and on and on and on. You guys are awesome. I love you, stacks. And uh, let's see what we can do on a go forward basis. And uh, figure out how to make some money. So um, a quick look here. Uh, so I'm looking at the news headlines and uh, and of course, as I said, I'm trying to catch up and I'm, and I'm way out of date, right? So you guys can even update me and uh, sort of educate me in the comments and then uh, we can get the conversation going and then eventually uh, sort of find out full stride again. Uh, today, April 8th, is today April 8th? Yeah. Um, Tom Cool writes in oilprice.com bearish news is mounting for oil. Is this true, guys? I don't know. Tell me down there in the comments, you know. Oil price says the IEA to release 60 million barrels of strategic stocks over and above the United States' 180 million barrel stock draw. Now, firstly, to right off the bat, this is like the height of stupidity uh, to, to tap into the strategic petroleum reserve in order to, uh, what was the purpose again? Cut the price at the pump? Have you guys seen the price of the pump go down? Because I don't know. I went into hospital and the price was like, where I live, you know, four dollars something a gallon. I come out of the hospital with four dollars something a gallon, regardless of all this um, news that they are sharing with us about strategic releases. But this is in addition, right? So the U.S. is going to release 180 million barrels. Let's put that into perspective. We are currently consuming about 100 million barrels per day, so uh, almost two days worth of uh, inventory. And IEA countries agreed to release another 60 million barrels, so 240. So now they're like about two and a half. A day's worth of uh, oil being released into the market. But guys, be cautious, take care, because you know the supply and demand curve is one of the most significant macro features of the um, energy investment set that we can use as a guideline in terms of where we are and where we are going. The European Union to ban Russian coal without delay. <laughs> this is the, the secret ter term here is with, with delay. So I'm, I'm, I'm kidding, I said without delay, but they say, with a delay. Why would the European Union ban Russian coal with a delay? Because if they banned it without a delay, they would be in a world of hurt. So uh, right now, arguably, regardless of which um, side of the um, equation you are on in terms of the, the uh, war in Ukraine, um, I have no opinion on that. Uh, like I'm, I have no particular standing on that. I don't have any knowledge of it. Uh, but I can tell you this. As long as Europe keeps buying Russian coal and Russian oil, um, they are actually helping to fund whatever the Russian efforts are in that particular piece of our geography. What else is happening? European tanker firms team up in a giant merger. You guys in tankers? You know, I dabbled in tankers before. I actually, on, in, in, in one stage, I unfortunately lost quite a bit of money um, on, a, on a tanker play. Uh, 
primarily because I didn't know what I was doing. You know, I always come into people and say, uh, uh, it's not my thing. And if it's not my thing, I'm not going there. I'm not going there as an investor, or whatever. I need to know and understand what I'm investing in, in order for me to uh, be able to be comfortable that I can make some money. If you're in tankers, tell me which, tell me what's going on. Uh, what should I be looking at? Uh, a lot of these very large container um, tankers have been very attractive for a variety of different reasons. How about Shell? Shell upgrades Russia right down costs. The US, yeah, sorry, UK energy major Shell announced its decision to exit Russia will trigger a write down of up to $5 billion in the first quarter of 2022. War, huh? What is it good for? Absolutely nothing. Who's saying that? Is it the guy from Wham or something? <laughs> I'm giving my age away as well, right? Uh, what was his name? George Michael, right? War, what is it good for? Absolutely nothing. Anyway, might not even have been his original song. Russian refineries start overflowing with surplus products. Well, you kind of kind of had to have an inkling that this was coming, right? Uh, I know they've been selling because uh, during the time I was uh, kind of lying in bed, just wasting time, I, um, I was paying attention and uh, I noticed that um, Russia had been selling uh, oil, especially to India at a discounted price. Good for India, you know, uh, cut the price of your energy demand um, quite substantially. You can uh, still consume the same amount in volume, but at a lower price. So good job, India. As I said, a minute ago, I don't have standing in you know international uh, space as it relates to uh, wars and fuel feuds and things like that between uh, people. I am just a simple commentator sitting on the sideline. U.S. jet fuel prices shoot through the roof. That's uh, not a surprise either. Jet fuel prices on the U.S. Atlantic coast have soared to a record seven dollars sixty per gallon this week as the region suffers from depleted inventories. Hmm. Now I'm getting a couple of little mixed signals here, but then I don't know what the demand is for jet fuel right now. Um, but if the inventories are low and the uh, price is shooting through the roof, that means there must be quite uh, demand for the product. Record coal production cuts Chinese import need. Good job, China, with China coal producing producers ramping up production in Q1. Beijing's import requirements are gradually dwindling amid the high outright prices. Most analysts expecting a drop of 40 to 50 million tons. That is material. Good job, China. Green investors. What the heck is a green investor? A little margin? Ask governments not to jeopardize the climate. Now, that's an interesting headline, right? So it's like, boy, how, how important? What, what's, what, what level of self-importance could you possibly have to think that you on an individual basis as a green investor can impact or jeopardize the climate, let alone ask the government not to jeopardize the climate. What is the government doing that is jeopardizing the climate? What more must they do for you? Must they say, um, let's all go back, uh, you know, uh, as we were just a um, hundred years ago and I have 90% uh, of the world's population living in poverty or um, should we do better and cleaner and be more efficient at what we do today and make sure that we actually strive for 100% of people out of poverty. I'd go with the latter. I don't know about you. You can tell me what you think in the comments. US natural gas prices nearing a 2008 record. These are high prices, Henry Hub futures trading at $6.40. You know, that's a, that's a high, high price, man. December 28, 2008. It's like almost 15 years ago. That's a long, long time since we saw Henry Hub Futures trading at over six bucks. Record Saudi prices cool Indian and Chinese interest. Following this week's record price setting from Saudi Aramco, media reports indicate that China and India will nominate less Saudi crude imports in May with both continuing to purchase discounted Russian barrels as European buyers self-sanction from buying euros in Russia. What does city say? That kind of uh, taking a little bit of the other side of the coin here, which is my uh, typical mindset in general. Uh, Citi, the big major US bank, their analyst says the fear of oil supply shortages are exaggerated, but Citi says Russia supply loss could be lower than feared. Citi's Ed Moore says the COVID lockdowns in China helped to lower demand. I'm not too sure about that one. That one is kind of a, a 
bit of a red herring there because I know I have been following the news in this regard and it relates to uh, lockdowns in Shanghai. Uh, I'd have a tough time believing that uh, lockdown, lockdowns in Shanghai is going to impact the entire supply demand curve on a global basis. Uh, in addition to that, uh, we've learned over the past two years that uh, lockdown, schmockdown, whatever, we don't, we don't know what these things do. We don't know how long they last. We don't know what, they, um, what the purpose is. Of course, the objective is to make sure that um, everybody stays healthy. But at the end of the day, you can use COVID as a catch-all for almost anything. It's almost like using something like climate change or global warming, right? If you don't know what to say, then you just blame climate change. The reason why I got sick over the last few weeks is because of climate change. You guys must just stop whatever it is that you're doing. The world will have more than enough oil in the coming months, according to Citigroup analysts. So that is an important point because if the world will have more than enough oil in the coming months, and assuming that they are correct, then that means there's going to be an oversupply or at least a sufficient supply, which means that demand will be met and prices should come down. That's the macro thesis sort of at a high level. It's kind of what it looks like. What's happening locally, Permian, Oxy, the Permian King, takes the lead as the United States drillers had 16 rigs. That's quite an uptick. What happened with Oxy the past week? Pretty good, huh? Last trade on Monday was just under $58, and last trade on Friday was almost 62 bucks. About a $4 delta there. Um, good job, Oxy. Good job, us. You know, One of the people in the... Uh, Comments said, um, if you're, uh, he, he said, Mr. Oxy, if you're going to be out of touch due to illness for a couple of weeks or so, um, at least you can uh, sort of take some solace in the fact that uh, you've hedged yourself well in terms of your uh, passive income and investments, especially as it relates to um, commodities like Oxy. Oxy's earning dates. I'm going to wrap it up here. So the earnings announcement, um, supposedly right now, this is an estimate. We don't know for sure. Uh, this is from the NASDAQ, working with their partner, Zach, is saying uh, we're looking at May the 9th. You know, so uh, today is April, what, the 8th, so it's about a month away. Here, let's look at the fine print down here. I know it's a little bit small for you guys. I'll just read it quickly. According to Zach's, based on eight analyst forecasts, the consensus EPS forecast for the quarter is $1.49. The reported EPS for the same quarter last year was negative 15 cents. This quarter, is, it should be a monster. Uh, we had... Um, we had WTI at uh, about 100 bucks or there, thereabouts, maybe even slightly higher on average. I haven't looked yet for um, the, almost the entire quarter, January, February, March, over 100 bucks. So uh, that's pretty good. Um, this little um, blue dot over here, Oxy has a high earnings call quality, sorry, ranking EQR for the 34th consecutive week. Earnings quality refers to the extent to which a current earnings predict future earnings. High quality earnings are predicted to persist, while low quality earnings do not. EQR, so earnings quality ranking, is a weekly ranking of relative earnings quality for a large universe of publicly traded US equities. Companies are compared to their peers in their industry. Um, so this is all interesting stuff. Um, this is kind of like just a, 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 a quick sort of uh, 50,000 foot macro uh, flyover thesis catching up on the news. Uh, I'm out of date. I'm out of, I've been out of touch. Uh, I don't know what's going on. I, I need to kind of uh, still, you know, get all my ducks in a row and, and figure out uh, what, what do I do first? What do I do next? Uh, being out of touch and being away from the stock market is brutal, especially for people like Mr. Oxy. Anyway, I wanted to let you know I'm back. I am, as I said, alive and broadcasting from Palm Beach in Florida. And uh, over the next few days or so, I'll start catching up and uh, take a look back at some of the things we did before and some of the things that we discussed, maybe even some of the things that I promised I would do that I, for obvious reasons, have not done yet. Anyway, uh, welcome back to the entire universe of almost 3,000 uh, energy commodity investors in this channel. I appreciate your support. I love you guys. Thank you for being with me for the past couple of weeks in my absence. And uh, I will talk to you soon. Bye-bye.